good afternoon and welcome back to the Auto Duromo Inti Nacional de Algarve. It's time for the final race of the day here in Portimao. Moto2 European Championship coming up for the fourth, fourth race of the day at the 4.5 kilometer ribbon of tarmac that is the Algarve International Circuit. Six left turns, nine right turns, a spectacular, spectacular layout even for some racing. 17 laps coming up for the Moto2 European Championship riders here for their second race of the day under sunny blue skies. It really is a spectacular venue to come racing. If it's not on your bucket list already, do make it one when fans are allowed back into the circuits. It's a glorious place to come watch a bit of motorcycle racing, even if you're a Formula One fan, some four wheeled racing as well as they come here too. My name is Elliot York, alongside me is Lewis Sudderby, bringing you the final race of the day. And in race one, it was that man again, Fermin Aldegea. Really is taking the Moto2 European Championship by storm. It's six wins in a row now for the young Spaniard, just 16 years old. And he's riding as mature as I've seen for a long, long time in the Moto2 European Championship. Certainly not acting his age. I know what I was doing at 16 year old and it wasn't winning races in a very mature manner uh, in Moto2 on a track like Portimao. Yeah, he's, he's not put a wheel wrong, has he, all weekend. I mean, here's what happened early one in race one, and he was dominant from the outset. Yeah, got the whole shot into turn one, beat teammate Alonso down the hill, and from there, he didn't really look back. He took a couple of laps to really get going, to really pull clear uh, from teammate. Uh, Alonso Lopez and yeah in the end it was a good four second victory uh, for Fermin Aldegate. Alonso Lopez had Lucas Tulovic to deal with in the open exchange of the number three bike there made life difficult for Lopez on the Bosco Scuro talent team chatty bike but drama would unfold just after Dimas Ekipritara fell down at the final corner Lucas Tulovic took the front up at turn 13, and lucky for Lukas Tulovic, the German. There you can see there, very frustrated, and Stanley with himself. Valuable championship points lost to the two uh, speed up machines, the Bosco Scuro machines of Lopez and now De Gear. But teammate Adam Noradin was battling out for third place with Xavi Carlos before Carlos made an error. No one could catch Al De Gear, but Noradin kept tabs on Lopez for most of the race until the final couple of laps where Lopez just edged clear of the Malaysian rider who instantly is now third in the championship ahead of Lukas Tulovic. A couple of riders found it difficult going down at turn five. We've seen plenty of drama there today across the three races we've seen, including Kemith Kubo suffered another DNF. No such issues though for Fermin Aldegir. The number 54 crossed the line. Another comfortable victory in the books this time at Portimao. What we're going to see in race two, I wonder, can anyone stop Aldegir's march towards the 2021 European Moto2 Championship title? Alonso Lopez's teammate will certainly try and have something to say about it. As will Adam Norrid and Lucas Tulovic. But that was race one. What are we going to see in race two coming up very, very shortly? There it is then. Turn five of the Autodromo Internacional de Algarve. Spectacular venue, spectacular weather. 27 air temperature, 42 degrees track temperature. So warm, not too hot, but certainly warm enough for these Moto2 uh, Moto riders to complete the last session of the day. And we saw Lewis yesterday that in qualifying, the riders would find it a little bit trickier to go faster in the afternoon conditions. So it does play a part. Um, but are we going to see anything different this afternoon than we did this morning, do you reckon? We'll see. I mean, it was noticeable in the afternoon sessions through the weekend that Lopez appeared to be slightly closer, generally, to Aldeguer on pace. Now, there is an element of straw clutching going on there, um, but Lopez will certainly feel he's got a chance if he can get ahead of him off the line. And the big unanswered question, as I mentioned at the end of race one earlier today, is what Lukas Tulovic can do. Um, having got a great start earlier on, got himself up into the battle for second place before crashing out at turn 13. He certainly appeared to have the pace to give Alonso Lopez 
a hurry up at the very least. Whether he can challenge him for victory, we shall wait and see whether he can go after Aldegar up front. We are slightly delayed. You can see the riders now out on track. That's the sighting lap that they're on at the moment. Because of the delay that we had during the Moto3 Junior World Championship race in the red flag, the pit lane has just opened just under two minutes ago and they will go off racing at half past the hour, 2.30 p.m. local time. We'll be getting underway. Yeah, that's just under 15 minutes, the clock just ticked down to 13 minutes. So yeah, not too long to wait then for the final race of the day here in Portsmouth. As we hear the riders revving out of pit lane on their Moto2 Honda powered machines, of course. They're not using the Triumph 765 engines that we see on the world stage yet. I think that will be coming either next year or the year after. But yeah, still the Honda powered machine. So very screamy sounding engines compared to the, the more dulcet tones of a Triumph engine. but nevertheless still provides very, very good racing and can anyone beat Fermi out again? That is the question on everyone's lips. The number three of Lukas Tudovic, as we mentioned, will be trying to make amends for his race one crash. Oh, thankfully okay with Lukas Tudovic, just to, as crashes go, it was the ones you sort of want really. Um, a simple front end tuck, no injuries, no real damage to the bike as we get to know, I think, Lucas Sulevich now. My name is Lucas Sulevich. I'm 21 years old. I started riding motorcycles with five years uh, of age and now it's already my 16th year on, uh, on a motorcycle. From the small categories, I, I went pretty early to Spain to the Model 2 FIMCEF uh, European Championship and now it's already my sixth year on Model 2 uh, so I've got quite a lot of experience and now for this year in the new team with the Vicky Moll Intact GP racing team. I never felt so good in the team. It's professional and a good atmosphere at the same time and also we have an amazing bike so I, I feel really really good in this new team. There we are, getting to know Lukas Tulevich, the German rider. He will start from the middle of the second row in fifth place. Some of you may recognize him from the Moto E World Cup. Best of fourth place there last season at Jerez in 2020. And as we mentioned, Lewis, he really needs to make amends for his turn one error, uh, lap, his race one error, not turn one or lap one, his race one error um, to try and just claw some points back in the championship because especially Fermin Aldeguer and his teammate Alonso Lopez are starting to run away with it. Yeah, errors have been few and far between for this young man. He continues to be undefeated in 2021. Now, winning streaks always end somewhere, as we saw last year with uh, Yari Montea, who uh, looked as if he was on course for a perfect season in this championship before he uh, went down on the warm up lap of all places back at Aragon last year. Um, so, in a championship of this level with so many different races, so many different circuits, different conditions, there is always a lull somewhere, and that's got to be in the back of Aldeguer's mind, and that's why he'll be keen to capitalise while he's on top and bank all these points when he can. Lopez, starting second, with six second places to his name, which leads him 30 points in arrears, he knows that time is running out with just four races to go after this one. Time will be running out for him to make any indent in that championship lead. Yeah, six second places is certainly nothing to be sniffed at for... Alonso Lopez in his debut Moto2 European Championship season but when it's your teammate winning all the races ahead of you it, it's, it's got to hurt a little bit Alonso Lopez no disgrace whatsoever he's had a fantastic year um, but yeah racing in racing the teammate is the rider or driver that you really want to beat and that's your first um, first competitor so yeah Alonso Lopez like you say Lewis will be trying to make a inroads into the championship lead that Aldeguer is slowly building up. It's 30 points. Uh, it could be more because he's won all the races. So for it to be only 30 points is credit to Alonso Lopez. Um, but someone who will be having something to say about it will be Adam Norodin. He ran Alonso Lopez close in race one. Just lost touch in the final handful of laps. But that's his third podium of the season, as you can see at the bottom of your screens. And going from the outside of the front row, he's in prime position to attack the podium once again. 
Yeah, he'll certainly be looking to go on to the attack on the opening lap. Of course, his teammate as well, who will come on to in a, in a short second, Lucas Tulovic, will also have eyes on that. But yeah, Noradin, uh, a big boost for him. His third podium of the year, uh, as you mentioned, and it equals his best ever result in this class. Here's a rider who uh, was entertaining, if nothing else, in, in race one, Xavi Cardaluz, who was quick, but also erratic uh, at other points in the race. He was showing some incredible pace when he got into clear air, but he also made one or two costly errors that dropped him back through the pack. Fourth position in the end for him, um, which was a solid result, matches his best of the season, but he seemed to have the pace in race one to challenge for the podium. If only he could put it together over a full race distance. 17 laps to come. If he can put 17 clean laps together, he won't be a million miles off the podium. No, he won't. And yeah, those couple of mistakes, uh, I think one was down into turn five, um, really did cost Cardaloos a chance of fighting for the podium. Uh, he finished a good six seconds behind Adam Noradin in fourth place in race one. So, yeah, once he'd uh, lost about three seconds, it was really uh, impossible for Cardaloos to make up the time. Here he is then, Lukas Tudovic. We spoke about him a lot in the, the lead up to this race. Just getting some last minute energy on board. Yeah, full throttle down into turn one. Uh, hopefully he does use the brakes in turn one. He won't be going full throttle down to turn one, but yeah, he's uh, all eyes on the prize is Lukas Tulovic after finishing 17th in race one after that crash. Yeah, eyes only ahead for Lukas Tulovic. He's uh, eyeing up the podium and yeah, he was giving Alonso Lopez in particular a really hard time earlier on in the race that we saw this morning. Um, so there's no reason to suspect that Tulovic can't do the same again. And even when he remounted later on in the race, in race one, he was setting pace that was better than anything other than the top three and you'd imagine had he been in had the competitive juices been flowing and he was up with that leading group early later in the race he might have been able to go even faster than that Matteo Ratto uh, is in sixth position now he finished a career best fifth earlier on today um, 20 seconds off the winner but still a very very strong result for him better than we've seen of course from him uh, this season because it's his best result overall um, and an interesting race for him. He had a pretty uh, intense battle for a long, a long part of the race with Sam Wilford after he made a mistake earlier in the race. But uh, yeah, confidence will be high for Rato, and he'll be looking to uh, back that up with another top six finish this afternoon. Yeah, P5 in race one for Rato. A very, very good ride from the Italian, finishing in the end four seconds ahead of uh, Britain's Sam Wilford. Uh, so not sure if Sam Wilford made a mistake or Rato just had some superior late race pace but yeah nevertheless a very very good ride from Rato to finish p5 will be scanning to Kemit Kubo on the, the front of the third row the VR 46 master camp rider fortunately it wasn't the race one he would have been looking for glad to see he's all smiling though he's revved up and ready to go for race two as you can see there that's three DNS now in the last four races and the 23rd place in Catalonia obviously scores you zero points so after a very good start to the season P4 and P6 in Estoril it's not quite gone uh, Kubo's way unfortunately yeah how much did that race one earlier today sum up Kubo's season he's so quick and so entertaining but he's also um, a little inconsistent and a little difficult to predict he was uh, on course for pro well, probably fourth position earlier on he was looking very very good indeed but uh, just a costly error at such a bad time it was a bad couple of laps wasn't it earlier on today for the VR46 Master Camp team because at the same time uh, his teammate Carl Paz made a mistake at turn five and lost a couple of places which he later recovered um, but Kubo I think the uh, the message in his ear from his team before this race started will be just see the checkered flag yeah, absolutely. I mean, to finish first, first you must finish is the old saying. And even if you don't finish first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, top tens, you've got to have points on the board if you're going to have any chance of trying to finish high up in the standings. So, yeah, Kamit Fukube really does need to uh, finish the race. We're just looking at Dimas Eki Pratama. He also had a, a DNF in race one after crash now. I think it was at turn 15, so a fast crash for uh, Dimas Eki. Thankfully, he's all OK, though, to race in race two. The Pertamina... Mandalika Sag Stylo Bike Uvic team. That's a mouthful and a half. <laughs> uh, he's the sole rider today. If you didn't join us for race one, unfortunately, Piotr Bierczykowski has had to go home after suffering from angina uh, issues. So uh, we wish Bierczykowski all the best. He did say he'll be back in Aragon in three weeks' time. So, yeah, all the best to the Polish rider. Sam Wolford then starting ninth and uh, coming into this on the back of his best results in this championship earlier on today he's now up to 17 consecutive points finishes in the european motor 2 championship and of course his first top six earlier on today the uh the curve is certainly pointing upwards for sam in his uh, motor 2 european championship career and uh 
Further progress from there might be slightly more difficult given some of the riders he's got to try and pick off ahead of him, but confidence will certainly be at an all-time high for Sam. Yeah, good ride from Sam to finish P6. Like we say, only four seconds behind Matteo Reto, so he'll be round to go again. That's Alex Toledo. Sorry, it wasn't. It was Alex Escrig, uh, the leading um, stock 600 rider from, well, every race this year. He's won all the races in his class. Uh, finished ninth in race one, just behind Alex Toledo on the Calix, and just ahead of Alessandro Zetti as we get a look at the grid. Yep, so once again, it's Fermin Aldeguer on pole position. Can he make it a magnificent seven wins out of seven at the start of this season? Alonso Lopez will have something to say about that from second. Norodin starts third. Can he convert that into another podium? Cardo is fourth ahead of Tulovic. Watch out for him from row two with Reto in sixth. Kubo starts seventh ahead of Eki Pratama and Sam Wilford. Uh, Eskrik and Toledo together on row four ahead of Alessandro Zetti. Carl Paz looking to make progress again from 13th ahead of Vostatek and Ishizuka with Kroza and the August brothers on row six. Kevin starts ahead of Leon with Rehacek and Moreno completing our 20 rider lineup. And a reminder once again, no Piotr Biasikerski due to his uh, angina issues. Uh, he will be back in three weeks time at Aragon, we hope. But one race to go then this afternoon here at Portimao and all eyes on Fermin Aldeguer. Can they stop his unbeaten start to the season? That is the question. Can anyone stop Fermin Aldeguer in 2021? Alonso Lopez threatened to do so in the first race of the season at Estoril, but since then it's really been the Aldeguer show in the European Motorsport Championship. It's all about the start, isn't it, Lewis? If Alonso Lopez and anyone else can try and get the whole shot and just rustle, uh, ruffle Aldeguer's feathers a little bit, uh, just to knock him off his off his perch slightly and not allow him to get into a, an early race with him, then that's when they can maybe start to think about trying to beat Aldegay. But as we saw in race one, if he can get the whole shot, um, keep it calm on the opening two or three laps, and then he can just sort of use his superior pace. It's not a, it's not a lot, but a two, three tenths over Alonso per lap adds up over uh, race distance. So yeah, it is all about the start, isn't it? Yeah, he had a phenomenal rhythm earlier on today, Fermin Aldeguer. He was able to lap consistently in the 145s. He even got as low as a 144.4 at one point, which is a lap time that would have put him comfortably on pole position uh, yesterday. So if he can get into a rhythm and he's got no riders disrupting that, he's got the pace to go away at the front once again. But Alonso Lopez and indeed the uh, six, the uh, the intact uh, bikes, the uh, Dynavolt bikes further behind, uh, they will be looking to try and close in on that. And yeah, if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen at the start for uh, for Tulovic and Norodin as well as Lopez. If they can disrupt Aldeguer's rhythm on the opening lap, we may have a race on our hands. If not, then surely it's Aldeguer's to lose. Yeah, for a bit of uh, reference on Aldeguer's time, Sam Lowe's pole position in the Moto2 World Championship this year was a 42.9. So for Aldeguer to be in the 44s on a, a slower motorcycle um, is seriously, seriously impressive stuff. Uh, we can't speak highly enough of the 16-year-old this season, um, but the number 21 of Alonso uh, Lopez will be trying his utmost to dethrone uh, that man there, Aldeguer. Yes, it's, I mean, as I mentioned earlier on, these winning streaks are so difficult to put together. They look easy. They do look easy with Alvaguer winning races comfortably as he is. But at this sort of level, with such strong, strong competition and so many different tracks, so many different conditions, it's so easy just to make one mistake to bring an end to all of it. But Alvaguer, from the start of the season, really, we've barely seen a single error from him. And that's the job of Lopez, to try and force an error out of his young Spanish teammate. Yeah, at 16 years old and you're not making any errors in your debut Moto2 European Championship season, then you've got some talent about it, haven't, haven't you? We'll see then. This is the crucial part of the race, really, as the lights go out, green flags waved, red flag will move, and we're almost underway for our last race of the day here in Portimao. The lights will come on. 
And then they'll go out and it's Fermin Aldegueo who gets a great launch from pole position. Alonso Lopez tucks into the slipstream, and gets a little bit of a wheelie on into the turn one. Is Alonso Lopez going to go for the whole shot? Yes, he is up the inside. Alonso Lopez then takes the whole shot into turn one. And that's Lucas Tulovic, I think, coming yep. up the inside of Aldegueo too. But is Aldegueo going to fight back into turn three? Yes, he is. So that's crucial, Lewis. Alonso Lopez takes the lead of the race early doors. Yeah, Tulovic didn't get the greatest launch off the second round. I was keeping an eye on him off the start line, but he just managed to get a great slingshot down into turn one and then got up the inside of his teammate Norodine and then managed to hold it and as you say Lopez straight away getting in into the side of Aldeguer not literally of course but trying to uh, throw him off of his rhythm and that opened up an opportunity briefly for Tulovic so of course he's now settled back into third but it was very clear in the early stages of the race that Tulovic was able to match the pace that Lopez was setting so he will certainly be eyeing up the back of Aldeguer at the moment this is his chance there have not been many opportunities for the likes of Tulovic this season to lay one on the nose of Fermin Aldeguer but he might have a chance here so that's exactly the start that Alonso Lopez was needing then. I didn't think he was close enough to dive at the inside at turn one, but he was brave on the brakes and made it stick, got the apex and got it sorted out. So Alonso Lopez then makes the start he wants. And yes, you're right in saying Lucas Tudovic did make a good start, but now he's just got to try and latch onto the back of Fermin Aldegare and try and disrupt his rhythm um, before they can try and break clear. There's Sam Wilford there on the number 35 AGR machine. Looks like he's at least held station or just dropped back a couple of places maybe he p9 on the grid he looks like he's around about there for the time being so lap one completed them it's alonso lopez leading Fermin Aldeguer. Fermin Aldeguer right up in the slipstream of his teammate though are we going to see him move down into turn one or down the straight alonso lopez pulls to the right hand side he goes defensive early doors who's going to lead into turn one it's alonso lopez who leads on to lap two then from Fermin Aldeguer. and lucas tulovic is right there in p3 Kubo was getting very aggressive on the opening lap. We saw him uh, trying to dive up the inside of Reto into turn 13, but he went wide and lost the position again. He's just gone wide again at turn three, and he's on the outside. I think he's trying to make that move stick on the number 13, but he's struggling to get it done at the moment. Cardaluz has also lost out in the early stages. He's down to seventh, so the pace that he showed in the early stages, he's going to have a hard job to uh, convert it into a result from there. Um, but yeah, Kubo definitely getting aggressive in the early stages of the race. And Noradin's now starting to come under pressure as well. Ratto, having seen off the challenge of Kubo, is now having a look at the back of the podium finisher from earlier on. Yeah, Noradin just losing touch on his teammate there slightly, who he overtook in the overall standings in race one. Was that Aldeguer going up the inside it's of Alonso Lopez? To have a move there. Surely not. I can't quite see. Of course, they're on the same machine. No, not quite. If they'd have made a move there, then I'd have been very, very surprised because that's not normally somewhere we ever see overtaken coming down the hill. Uh, bombing out and then going back up the hill. So it's still Alonso Lopez leading there. Lucas Tudovic just losing touch a little bit, I think, on this lap. Yeah, a tenth or two slower in sector two than the riders ahead of him. So this will be interesting now. How long can Alonso Lopez keep his teammate behind him? Aldegay is looking uh, keen to get through, you'd say, uh, as the slipstream will now come into effect as they complete lap two. Well, Lopez's line down the main straight on the last lap around was very deliberate, wasn't it? He? he did not want to give Aldeguer the inside line into turn one. And here he goes again. They're pretty much hugging the pit wall as they come down the main straight. As Aldeguer's Kubo is down again. Doesn't that just sum up his season? That's his second crash of the day. Uh, Aldeguer, though, uh, still trails. Uh, still trails his teammate. Again, Lopez very deliberately making sure his teammate can't get at the inside of him to turn one. And uh, as good as Fermin Aldeguer is, um, he'll struggle to get around the outside of his teammate Alonso Lopez into turn one at Portimao. So uh, a very deliberate strategy and a clever strategy from Lopez. If that's going to be the main overtaking spot, make him go the long way around. Absolutely. A very clever strategy from Alonso Lopez. He'll have clearly gone back to the drawing board after race one, sat down with his team and said, right, what can we do to try and stop uh, Aldeguer from one, taking the lead and two, trying to stretch clear early doors and he's yeah he's going defensive down the front straight it is the main overtaking spot here in Portimao there's plenty of them oh as Aldeguer just gets a little bit too happy on the gas as we see Kemet Kubo coming into the pit box another retirement another DNF for the VR46 Master Camp rider so not a good day at the office for Kemet Kubo, Kubo but he'll be back in Aragon to try and make amends 
turn 14 was the uh, place where uh, Kubo went down incidentally. But this is a fast lap that Alonso Lopez is putting here, fastest of anybody in the first two sectors. Aldeguer looking like he's coming back at him in this third sector of the lap, but Lopez is doing his best to try and stretch this leading group out. Uh, Aldeguer, you would think, would have the pace to respond if uh, Lopez does up the pace because they're lapping in the 146s at the moment although I think Lopez is going to get well below that as they come across the line this time around and Aldeguer as we mentioned earlier on was able to lap not consistently but briefly in the 44s this morning in race one um, so Lopez trying his best to try and stretch the seeding group out but I think what he's going to end up with is a one-on-one -on -one battle with his teammate as Norodin comes under more pressure the fastest lap of the race though Xavi Cardaloos once again showing what kind of pace he's got a 145.2 for him six tenths quicker than the Bosque Scuros out front just saw there out again Alonso Lopez going into turn one side by side and it is out then who leads the race we didn't quite see it we saw them going side by side into turn one out was on the outside uh, and somehow he's made a move stick so it's out now unless my eyes have deceived me who leads the race it is the number 54 then so now can Alonso Lopez or Lucas Tulevic for that matter try and bite back straight away it's what they've got to do because they know the pace that out possesses they've got to fight, try and find a way back through before out can stretch out a lead like he did in race one yeah, absolutely. This is danger signs. And they're, they're, they're keeping with him at the moment. It looked like he was building out a little bit of a gap, but Lopez has closed it up again. But yeah, this is a crucial phase of the race now. Aldeguer has clear track in front of him. He's not got to judge himself against the uh, Bosque Scuro of Lopez ahead of him. He can ride his own lines, ride his own pace. And that's a pace so far that Lopez and uh, Tulovic and Norodin have struggled to match. Uh, and the fastest second sector of the race from Aldeguer. Here's what happened then into turn one. Does he go all the way around the outside of his team? I think he does. Yeah, we saw these pictures and then it panned back to the card loose battle. Oh, no. Okay, the little switch back. So Alonso Lopez obviously tried to let the brakes off a little bit to try and get the inside line. Al De Gea saw what was coming, hit the apex and uh, yeah, got the cut back. So a great, clever move there from Al De Gea. He's already stretching a little bit of a gap, Lewis. This is a little bit of an ominous sign now for Alonso Lopez and Lucas Tudovic behind. What can the slipstream do as they come over to uh, clock with 13 laps to go? Yeah, we've already talked about his uh, consistency and his pace, but the race craft there as well from Aldeguer, it took him three laps to figure it out. He realized that Lopez was going to block him into turn one and try and take that inside line, force him to go the long way around. So he said, OK, then, if that's your plan, I'll let you go out wide and then I'll just cut back underneath you into turn two. Kyle Paz has unfortunately crashed out of the race, so a double DNF for the VR46 Mastercam team. Both of their riders out there is Kyle Paz, both of them out within four laps. So a disastrous afternoon. Uh, for them after a promising morning for Carl Paz. Here's what happened to him, and that's not a place you want to crash. Fortunately, he disappears off uh, to the rider's left, so he's not uh, on the track, and his bike comes to a rather sorry stop uh, in the gravel trap. But both VR46 Master Cam Calyx is out of the race. Yeah, it's a quite a strange clash, actually. I don't ever recall seeing someone um, go down quite at that exact moment. But yeah, thankfully, he didn't slide down the hill into the track. He was into the gravel and he's up OK. Disappointed, of course, uh, but the main thing is rider OK. So then, Aldeguer just put in a purple sector one. Alonso Lopez is keeping tabs with him so far, but we saw this in race one, didn't we, Lewis? So, uh, Aldeguer, once he got to the front, he didn't immediately start to break clear. He just took his time and then after two, three, four laps, then just started to wedge out tenth by tenth, lap by lap. And once he got over a second, it was sort of game over. Yeah, he basically said to the rivals behind him, I can do this pace for the entire race. Let's see if you can. And the, and the rivals behind him, they could match him occasionally and they could match him for a couple of laps. But the longer the race went on, the more the elastic started to snap uh, between those two leaders. Um, so, yeah, this is dangerous times now for Lopez. The gap's starting to build out as uh, Aldeguer breaks into the 44. It's a 44-9 that time around. But credit to Lopez. He matches him near enough for 45-0 that time around, which I think is faster than anything Lopez did in race one earlier today. So he's certainly rising to the challenge. Yeah, Lopez doing well then. Tulovic also sticking there in third place. Not close enough to make a move on Lopez, but he's there or thereabouts, which is important for Tulovic, who's, as we mentioned, now slipped down to fourth place behind Norodin, who is behind him on track uh, in the championship standings. And, yeah, Norodin, seven, uh, 46 points behind Lopez in the championship in third. Of course, Lopez, 30 behind the race lead out again in the championship. So this is really important stuff. We're over halfway through the season now, and this is where it starts to really count. No team orders in the... Uh, in the Chiati Boscoscura garage, that's for sure. Both riders gunning for the title. 
and hopefully for Alonso Lopez's sake anyway that he can continue to latch onto the back of Fermin Aldeguer. This is the battle for fourth then, a three-way battle between Adam Norrigan and the two promo racing riders. And Carter Lewis is having a right on the inside. That's going to close on him pretty quickly. And he now might be under pressure from his teammate, Matteo Reto. Carter Lewis once again, pretty feisty and pretty entertaining, but it's not necessarily proving all that productive so far. <laughs> he's having a look at Norrigan at every possible opportunity, but so far he's still staring at his rear wheel. Yeah, by the looks of things, if Carter Lewis was manage, managed to get past Norodin, he might be able to start to break clear and try and catch Tulevic, because remember, Tulevic is in third place. That's the final podium position. Carter Lewis is chasing a maiden podium position, so he can see it there just in the distance, but he's got Norodin to deal with first. And yeah, the gap between Lucas Tulevic and his teammate Norodin, we'll see over the line. It's going to be a good one and a half seconds, maybe even more. Yeah, 1.4 seconds or around about. Uh, the gap is to bridge, so... Here he goes, Card Card he's going to make one. it stick this time, up the inside is turn one and out, and uh, Cardaloos finally makes it stick, but I was about to say, we now see them on screen, I think we've got yeah. a race on here, Elliot, because that time around, Lopez was faster uh, than Aldeguer, he was two tenths quicker, he did a 45-0, Aldeguer only able to do a 45-2 uh, on that last time around, and Tulovic is, uh, is just about dropping out of touch now, he's a second behind them, but Lopez at this early stage is not only able, only able to match Aldeguer, but on that last lap he was able to close on him. Yeah, it looks as if Aldeguer has got a little bit of an advantage in the first couple of sectors, seems to be able to edge out a little bit, a little bit of a gap coming out of turn five up the hill. Um, unless my eyes deceive me, but it looks like the way. And then Lonzo Lopez is able to just reel it back in uh, in the latter half of the lap. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, you're right, Lewis. We definitely have, well, it's definitely more of a race than we saw in race one. Lonzo Lopez doing really well to latch onto the back of Fermin Aldegaro. Runs slightly wide there, but it doesn't matter too much uh, at turn 11, dropping down into turn 12. There's Tulovic. This is the place where he crashed in race one, turn 13, no issues so far for the number three rider. And yeah, oh, that was Norodin getting out of shape, coming out of turn 13 in the background. I was just about to point out the card loose is trying to break clear uh, of Adam Norodin. Yeah, it's cost him as well. Yeah, He's dropped back a couple of places. The two promo racing riders are both ahead of him. Um, so that'll put card loose up into fourth, Reto into fifth. Uh, we didn't see whether Norodin had got back up or got back on track in sixth. Uh, we'll catch them over the line. Last time around then, just half a tenth splitting the two Boscasuros. And as you mentioned, Elliot, the final sector of the lap is where Lopez is making his time up. He pulled back two tenths on Aldeguer, the two tenths that Aldeguer had opened up in the middle sector. Lopez just pulled it straight back in again. Uh, and Norodin did come across the line in sixth position. That moment cost him a second, and he's now just on the tail of Reto in sixth position. Sam Wilford's running seventh. He's got Dimaseki Pratama right behind him. Uh, he'll be keen to bounce back after his crash earlier on. Alex Toledo is running ninth. Alessandro Zetti in 10th and change Lopez through. He changed the lead. I'm not sure what happened. It was down the straight. I don't know what happened, but maybe Aldegay made a little mistake, mistake coming out of turn four. Alonso Lopez then overtook him into, well, just before turn five. I thought Alonso Lopez had just ran a little bit wide into turn five, but no, he holds it. So we've got a new race leader. It's Alonso Lopez back in the lead ahead of Fermin Aldegaier. So yeah, we've definitely got a race on here between the two speed up machines, the Boscoscuro machines now, we should say. Um, and yeah, this is vital for the championship. If Alonso Lopez wants to start making inroads, finishing second is all well and good, but when you want to win a title, you've got to beat your rival and finishing second to your rival every weekend isn't going to hand you the title. So yeah, this is vital for Lopez. Yeah, and we'll see uh, if uh, Lopez has now been able to sort of understand what Aldegaard did to him earlier on in the race at Turn 1 and try and change his tactic. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to give Aldegaard the inside line this time, but I think he's got to be a bit careful of not trying to just win a battle on the brakes into Turn 1, knowing full well that Aldegaard is just going to duck back underneath him because there's so little room on the outside of Turn 1. It's a pretty tight corner, so if you go side by side through there, the guy on the inside is always going to come out ahead, but Aldegaard is looking to try and make sure that he's ahead before they even jump on the brakes for Turn 1. Here we go, Lopez does stay ahead for the moment, and crucially, he wasn't even able to break on the inside. He was able to take the racing line into turn one and comfortably keep the lead. Uh, they dropped into the 146s that time round, which has allowed uh, Tulovic uh, to, break, uh, to close in on them slightly. He's still 1.4 seconds off the lead, um, but at the moment, it looks like a straight fight between the two Boscoscuro teammates. If it's at all possible for Lopez, he might want to try and just slow the pace down slightly back 
Aldegea into Tulovic to try and take more championship points from Aldegea um, because obviously 30 points in the title race if it finishes as we are it'll be back down to 25 as we started the weekend uh, but it's not quite enough if he, if Al Alonso Lopez can get Tulovic into the fight um, then that'll be good for his title chances but of course it's very much easier said than done um, we saw it with Troy Bayliss and Colin Edwards in 2002, didn't we? Um, at Imola, not quite sure we're going to see the same here, but I wonder what Alonso Lopez is thinking. I'm sure he's just thinking, right, I just need to go out and win no matter what happens, I'm sure. I'm There'll curious, I'm curious as to what Alder is thinking as yeah. well, because it, 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 we'll, we're going to see if this goes deep into the race and they're still this close, we'll find out just how much Alder values this undefeated streak that he's got this season, because if he finishes second behind his teammate and only loses five points for the championship, it's not ideal, but it's not a bad result by any means. He's limited the damage with Alonso Lopez winning. But if uh, Lopez is able to take a victory and Alder crashes trying to pass him then of course that does something close the championship down to five points as they go side by side once again and Lopez again very deliberately hugging the pit wall down the main straight and forcing Aldegaard a long way around and able to break comfortably ahead eight laps to go then negotiated turn one the two bottle two Scuro machines locked together in a fantastic battle here in the final race of the day in Portimao yeah Aldegaard I'm thinking as a 16-year-old riding Moto2 for the first scene and he just wants to go out and win. Mm. He knows he can do it. Uh, so I'll be surprised, although it wouldn't... I mean, I say I'm surprised. It actually w also wouldn't surprise me at the same time because he's such a mature rider for his young age uh, that if he can't quite um, match Lopez for whatever reason, that he'll settle for second place because the team will have obviously had a word with him saying, look, we don't need to win every race. I know we are, and we've got the pace to do so, but you've built up a 30-point lead now. Um, but in the heat of the battle, obviously, things can change. So I assume, sort of hope for the spectacle that Aldegea will go for uh, the race win, but it's going to have to be a calculated decision. And who knows if Lopez can start breaking clear, which I'm not sure he will because... Aldegaard is looking a little bit feisty behind, isn't he? Yeah, Aldegaard uh, is certainly going to have a go. The question yeah. is whether he's going to risk throwing it at the scenery to try and make the move. I reckon he'll try and make a safe pass, but not a, a risky pass. Um, but at the moment, he seems pretty comfortable behind Lopez in second place. He's certainly not being dropped, and the pace is most definitely slower uh, than race one earlier today. They're doing high 45s at the moment, uh, deleting Boscoscuros, and Aldegaard was able to lap pretty comfortably in the low 45s earlier on. Um, so Lopez slowing the pace, or more to the point, just riding his pace uh, in this race. Uh, and at the moment, they're lapping slower than Tulovic and Carlos behind them. Um, but Lopez continuing to hold him off at the moment. Tulovic, though, for the last two or three laps, has been slightly faster than the leading Boscus girls. And Carlos, faster than the three of them ahead of him, he's 2.7 seconds off the lead. You'll just see him in the back of the picture. Yeah, Tulovic is 1.4 off the lead. So if the, the two teammates at the front start scrapping and... Uh, they start running a little bit wide and messing each other up, then Tulovic is in prime position to uh, try and take advantage of that. Yeah, Alonso Lopez running in a little bit deep there, gets it hooked up on the apex though, no real issues there, but you can tell they're pushing. I think the pace might be slower because of the temperatures, Lewis. We did see in qualifying, didn't we? Uh, it's probably a factor, uh, but you can tell these riders are pushing 100% uh, in the 27 degree heat with six and a half laps to go. Well, I mentioned earlier on before the race started that the hotter conditions did appear to bring Lopez closer to Aldeguer yesterday uh, in, the, in the qualifying session. Although Aldeguer set a blistering lap towards the end of the session, Lopez definitely appeared to have a little bit more of an answer to Aldeguer when the temperatures went up. And that certainly appears to be the case, case now uh, as Lopez runs slightly wide. That appears to be more of his line. He appears to take tighter lines into those tighter slower corners. He does the same at turn five and it gives you the impression that he's running slightly wide, but he gets it uh, he gets it leaned over and gets it into the corner nicely and manages to fire it out ahead of Aldegaard. That chasing group of Tulovic and Cardaloos are losing a bit of ground on this lap. In fact, it's Cardaloos who's really beginning to chase down Tulovic uh, on this lap. So we'll see what happens with those two across the line. But side by side they go once again. Just 15,000 separate them over the line this time. Tulovic has Cardaloos right on his case too as Lopez continues to hold on. It's a copy and paste lap after lap, isn't it? 
Fermin Aldeguer gets tucked into the slipstream of Lopez, who then pulls to the right-hand side of the track, the defensive line. He's defensive there as well. So with six laps to go, Lo Lopez is defending well from Aldeguer. But yeah, it's a mirror signal manoeuvre, isn't it, for uh, the riders going across the line and down into turn one. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out when we get to sort of two, three laps to go when it really is crunch time. And yeah, Lucas Tulovic has his hands full of Xavi Carlos. I think Carlos may have made a move there in turn five. We'll see when the camera pans back has, out. Yeah, he was, he was a ten and a half quicker in the uh, first sector and he was only 700s behind him over the line. So I think there has been a change of third place. But it'll be interesting to see Carlos' strategy now. We've only got six laps to go in this one. We're now fully into the closing stages of this race. He's now recognised what Alonso Lopez is trying to do. He's, uh, this is a slight exaggeration, but Lopez is essentially riding around the inside of the racetrack um, and trying to block off all the potential overtaking moves. So whether Aldeguer is able to recognise that and try and tee him up somewhere else, maybe into turn five or somewhere, maybe try and uh, get, the, uh, get the, the drive out of the corner and try and get him on the exit of one of these corners, because clearly under braking and into these tight hairpins and these big stops, Lopez does have the measure of Aldeguer at the moment. Should also point out in the Cardalus Tulovic battle that they're split by uh, just four, no, five points, sorry, uh, in fourth and fifth in the title chase. So that's a, a good battle going on there on track and in the championship standing. So is it going to be the same thing again then? Aldeguer gets tucked up behind Alonso. Alonso moves over to the right hand side of the track, but Fermin Aldeguer has got the pace down the straight. That's a change of the lead. Alonso Lopez is going to try and fight back. He does. He's later on the brakes. <laughs> Gets it stopped as he down into turn one, just about, but Aldeguer then fights straight back. But is Alonso they're gonna Alonso Lopez gonna fight back into turn three? Yes he is. Parks it on the apex. He has to. That's yes. all he's gotta do. He's got to overtake back straight away. He cannot let Aldeguer get out of front and get into his rhythm. Even if we are late in this race and the tires will be worn out. If Aldeguer gets some clear base track, you get the feeling he'll be off and away with it at the front. Lopez again, hard on the brakes, run slightly wide, but he'll get it. Manage to, he'll crank it back, get it over to that late apex for turn five. So that's no problem. But that was crucial for Lopez. If Aldeguer gets ahead of him, he literally has to overtake again at the very next corner. He cannot allow any space for Aldeguer to get into a rhythm out front. Aldeguer then showing his hand slightly to Lopez. He didn't try or didn't wasn't able to pass him. That's, that's tight. There's contact at the bottom of the hill. Oh my word. Alonso yeah, Lopez, Lopez won't enjoy that. He's getting straight back on. He's not having any of that. That's not a place where you see people overtake. Unless you join me and Mark in qualifying, you don't overtake through there. But Aldeguer, as you say, showing his hand. This is like the last lap, and we've still got four and a half to go here. But Lopez is signaling his intentions very, very clear for Aldeguer. He is playing for keeps. <laughs> I think our questions have been answered about what Aldeguer wants to do with this race. He wants to win it. But so does Alonso Lopez. We mentioned before that that's not really a passing manoeuvre. Aldeguer disagrees. There was contact. Thankfully, none of the riders went down. That was all mightily close then. Four laps to go when they cross the line. Aldeguer just gets shoved over to the right-hand side slightly. What's the gap over the line? 0.003 seconds. That's all mightily close. Who's going to lead into turn one? It's Alonso Lopez on the inside. On the brakes, Aldeguer. Is he going to switch back this time? No, he's not as the team look on anxiously in the box, and understandably so, with four laps to go. Parks on the apex again does Alonso Lopez at Term 3. <sighs> what could be crucial here? I mean, I know it's not by much, as you can see, 3 thousandths of a second, but I'm pretty sure at no stage in this race is Aldeguer led over the line on Lopez. He's always got alongside him, but Lopez has generally got to the finish line at the end of the lap ahead of Aldeguer. So Aldeguer, unless he's got a little bit more up his sleeve that he's saving for the last lap, Lopez will be confident enough that if he can lead into the final corner, he'll lead out of it. But what a move that was, and it was Look as close that. as you can get oh. in Moto 2. So lucky that none of them went down. So lucky that not one of them went down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. That's what we were like in the commentary box as well. I'm sure you were at home as well. There's the place we just saw it a lap earlier on. I think the line of stern. Yes, they are. Lopez leading out again. That was... That was so close. Thankfully, none of the riders went down. What's it doing to the gap back to Cardalus now? To say, these guys are scrapping out that it. They took, they lost eight tenths to Cardalus on that last lap while they were busy uh, swapping pain on the side of their Boscus Guros. Now they've they've calmed down a little bit on this lap, <laughs> but you can see Cardalus in the back of screen. He is chasing these two down at the moment, and they, if they if they start swapping pain a little bit more on these last three laps, then uh, Cardalus might be there to pick up the pieces. He's on course for a pretty solid podium at the moment uh, with Tulovic now uh, a best part of a 
second behind him. Reto has got the better of Nora Dean, incidentally, for fifth position, with Sam Wilford uh, running in a solid seventh place. Across the line they go once again. Uh, that time, Aldeguer led over the line by two hundredths of a second, so that could be significant as Lopez once again knows he's got to attack immediately. Yep, and so he does. Down into turn one, gets it stopped. Nice move from Lopez, but yes, over the line. That time around, it was Aldeguer who led over the line. Only just, but that could be vital with these two looking like they're going to be locked together until the final lap of the race. What's the gap back to Carlos? It's 1.6. Carlos finished uh, 13 seconds down on the race win in race one. So this is an almightily uh, good effort from the number 18. Alonso Lopez does back it in there, doesn't he? He runs in hot, but then gets it switched back and hooked up on the apex. Yeah, Card Luce will be licking his lips at that. He set his personal best first sector of the race. He's just in the back of picture, as you can see. He is closing in on these two Boscoscuros who are lapping in the, uh, well, Aldeguer did a 45.9. Lopez was in the 46s uh, last time around. The pace, as we've mentioned, is slower than the race earlier on today, and it is bringing Card Luce into play. Um, as we come into the uh, final two and a half laps of this race. It might just come a little bit too late for him to make a dent on these two Bosco Scuros out front. But which order these two finish in is still anybody's guess. Lopez continuing to block Aldeguer at every move. But once again, it'll be key to see what happens here as they come out of the final corner onto the main straight. A, will Aldeguer lead over the line? And B, will Lopez get him back again as they go into turn one? Yeah, what we're going to see now is Aldeguer trying to figure out what he's going to do in the latter stages of the race. We're into the latter stages. The last two laps are coming up. But can he lead over the line from finishing the lap in second place? Let's have a look. Is he going to do it this time around? I don't think he did. Oh, yes, he did by two thousandths of a second. That's how close it could be at the chequered flag in little over two laps time. As once again, Lopez gets the job done, I think, at turn one. I thought Aldeguer was going to get the cut back. Not quite this time. Is he going to make a move into turn three? No, because Lopez goes defensive once again. These two taking drastically different lines around this Portimao layout, but both going equally as fast. It's fascinating to watch. It is, and uh, Cardaloos again slightly faster. Not enough to close in. He's only a few hundredths faster on that lap around than the leader, which, of course, over the line was Aldeguer, as Lopez again takes his very different line into turn five than his teammate. Uh, Carl Lewis is going to run out of time, I think, to close that one in. Um, but it's going to be fascinating to see how this one plays out between the two Boscoscuro teammates. Uh, elsewhere, quick check on the Superstock 600 battle. You'll be not at all surprised to hear that once again it's been led by Alex S. Strig. He's got 15 seconds in hand uh, over Vostatek. Oh, wow. Close again at the bottom of the hill. And Alonso Lopez has ran wide. Is he going to go off the track? Oh. Yes, he is. Is he going to stay on? Hopefully he is. Yes, he is. But that has now cost him the chance of race victory. Fermin Aldegay aggressive up the inside at the bottom of the hill, the Craig, Craig Jones Dorner corner. I'll get my words out eventually at turn nine. And Aldegay now, has he sealed victory with that move? At the bottom of the hill, I think he has because the number 54 now leads from Xavi Cardluz. And how crucial is that in terms of the championship chase? Because Alonso Lopez, unless he puts a ferociously quick last lap together, is going to finish third place or even worse. That was a statement wasn't it? That was a real flexing of the muscles from Aldeguer. That was a case of, I'm the number one in this team, teammate. Get out of the way. And unfortunately, Lopez, I mean, he did his best. He, he didn't allow Aldeguer through, but I don't think there was anything wrong with it either. There was contact, but Aldeguer was further, fairly alongside. I mean, it was a corner that, as we mentioned before, you're not traditionally used to seeing overtaking moves, but he got fairly alongside, got up the inside of Alonso Lopez, and Lopez, to his credit, tried to hang on, but ultimately had to sit up and let him, let him go through. And as you mentioned, it's cost Lopez second place. So his run of P2s looks like it's going to come to an end. Um, but what a crucial move that could be, not just for today, but for the championship, for uh, Fermin Aldeguer. A 30-point lead looks like it's about to become 39. <sighs> what a move from Aldeguer. I'm sure Race Direction will be having a quick look at it, see if they saw anything wrong with it. But I don't think they did. Who's that in the gravel? It's a Malaysian. I think it could it's be Noradin. Adam Noradin, yeah. So no repeat podium for Noradin this time around, but it's Fermin Aldegay then who leads on the last lap over the crest. This is where the race winning, potential race winning overtake was made. Up the inside on his teammate Alonso Lopez, rounds it safely into the final last handful of laps here in Portimao. The body language between these two teammates will be fascinating in part of Fermi, won't it? It's going to be fiery in part of Fermi. You're going to have fun interviewing Fermin Aldegay. <laughs> 
in Park Ferme, but two corners then left to negotiate for the championship leader. It looks like he's going to extend his lead to nine points. I don't think Lopez is going to have anything to say about Xavi Cardaloos finishing second. That'll be Cardaloos' best finish. But here we go then, round the final corner comes the championship leader, Fermin Aldegea. It's two wins from two. It's seven wins from seven for Fermin Aldegea in 2021. He wins race two here in Portimao. What a ride from Fermin Aldegea. Cardaloos picks up his best finish. And Alonso Lopez, understandably frustrated with that. It was a harsh move down at turn nine. But he was alongside and it was, I wouldn't call it quite clean because there was slight contact, but it was firm but fair uh, from Aldegea. Absolutely, firm but fair. It was, it was, he was along the, up the inside. It was level, you'd have to say, with Lopez as they made it to the apex. And unfortunately, uh, two into one wouldn't go. Lopez riding straight past his teammate. I didn't see any uh, offer of congratulations there. I think he's understandably, even if he's not unhappy with his teammate, he's unhappy at having lost a win with a lap and a half to go. Shout out once again for Reto and Wilford, who matched their results from earlier on today, fifth and sixth. And Sam Wilford as well, um, another another step over him. Back-to-back -back top six finishes. Dimaseki Pratama taking seventh, uh, which is a solid recovery from his crash earlier on today. OK, I thought it was going to replay of the the turn nine pass, but it was Aldegaer just holding his hands up saying, well, I'm not sure if he's saying sorry, maybe he was, but yeah, good to see you there. High fives from the two teammates. I think that was a doff of the cap to Alonso Lopez from Fermin Aldegaer. A fantastic battle between the two teammates. Unfortunately for Lopez, he comes off second best after that move. Was that Danny Holgado giving Fermin Aldegaer congratulations? I think it might have been. But yeah, seven wins from seven. I don't think if the research was done correctly that anyone has done that in the Moto2 European Championship. 16-year-old Fermin Aldegaer really is creating history. Keep your eyes peeled on the number 54. He is going to be a Grand Prix star for sure. As I'm sure will Alonso Lopez. What a fantastic ride it was from the Spaniard. Third place. In the end for Lopez, really unlucky there to miss out, at least on a second place. Really, it deserved to be a one-two for Team Chiatti, Team Chiatti, Boscoscuro machines. But that's not how motorcycle racing works, is it? Unfortunately, sometimes you're left with the wrong end of the deal. In this case, Lopez just loses out on a potential race victory. Good season, good spirits though. Waving to the Marshal Zoo. As always, doing an excellent job here. Wouldn't be going racing without the Marshals. This guy wouldn't be able to be winning, way, winning races. Fantastic scenes. What a way to end the day here at the Algarve International Circuit. Card the loose, pulls into Park Ferme. P2. for the Andorran. That's his best result in the European Moto2 Championship. And as we mentioned, he finished fourth place in race one, but 13 seconds down on Aldegea. In the race two, just finished 2.2 seconds down. So fantastic work from Card Luce to finish second. But it was no match for this man, Fermin Aldegaer. What a race from the young Spaniard. His team understandably pleased. That's another victory. And now his championship lead will be 39 points heading to Aragon. Four races to go. There he is, Alonso Lopez. <laughs> Great sportsmanship between the two teammates. Lopez will be under, understandably frustrated, but as we say, it was a, a hard but firm move from Aldegay. He threatened to do it earlier on in the race, didn't he? There was contact between the two at that exact same corner. Thankfully, neither riders went down, but then waited a few more laps and Aldegay pounced once again, coming over the rise. But yeah, good to see Alonso Lopez in good spirits there. Another fine ride from the Spaniard who is still comfortably second place in the championship and is still proving to any of the doubters when he was shuffled out of the Moto3 World Championship. 
from the Max Starogarda Max Racing team. He's come into Moto2 and he's really, really impressing and raising eyebrows. I'll be surprised if both Aldeguer and Lopez aren't on the Moto2 World Championship grid in 2022. That remains to be seen. But they're providing some stunning racing in the 2021 European Moto2 Championship. The team posed for a photo. It's not another 1-2. That run comes to an end, but they're both on the podium once again. Here is that move then. Yeah, look, Aldeguer up the inside. And yeah, just, I mean, Aldeguer nearly runs wide himself. So he was obviously carrying a lot more corner speed into there. And that was close, wasn't it, from Alonso Lopez. Was out on the dirty side of the track. Obviously lose grip when you're out there and running wide up the hill. Couldn't do anything else but run wide. Thankfully, he missed the gravel and he managed to stay upright and came home third place. Rubbing his racing, as they say, in motorcycle racing and firming out again. Wins another race. Gives his thumbs up to Xavi Carlos, looks for his teammate, acknowledges that, yeah, apologies, it might have been a little bit too aggressive than what was needed, but it got the job done. Everyone's okay. None of the riders crashed. And I'm sure they'll go away this evening and be able to uh, enjoy it. We're gonna hear from race winner Fermin Aldegay. He's down in part Fermin with Lewis Sudoui. Fermin Aldegay, seven wins out of seven now, but you really had to work hard for that one. Uh, tell us about that race, and in particular, the battle with Alonso. Yes, what well, a race. Uh, the race was very difficult. For, for the condition, to, with, with the hot and with the windy, and with the battle of my, of my rivals, Alonso. But I make very good, very good work for, for this, and I'm very happy with, with all we gain, with my seventh victory, and thank you to my team and my sponsor. And so what's in Spanish, please? Sí, la verdad que ha sido una carrera muy difícil, Eh, ya que las condiciones eran hacía mucho calor y, y hacía mucho viento y luego con la batalla con mi compañero pero bueno eh, estoy súper contento con el trabajo de todo el fin de semana contento con mi séptima victoria y nada muchas gracias a todo mi equipo a mis patrocinadores y, y eso congratulations see you Aragon Pole sitter Fermin Aldeguer got a good start from pole like he did in race one, but it was his teammate Alonso Lopez who got the whole shot with Lucas Tulovic getting the better of teammate Adam Norrid into third place in the second race of the day for the European Moto2 riders. Kemet Kubo unfortunately crashed out for the second time in Portimao as we witnessed Fermin Aldeguer versus Alonso Lopez for the race lead. Aldeguer got the better of Lopez is the second VR46 Master Camp rider. Unfortunately, slipped out of contention. There was Fermin Aldeguer. He led for a handful of laps in the opening stages, but Lopez was able to keep tabs on him. And there's Adam Norrin keeping the two promo racing machines behind him, in particular Xavi Cardluce, who returned brilliantly in the second half of the race to grab a podium. There was Alonso Lopez retaking P1 then from Aldeguer got the job done before turn five, before we saw this happen numerous times down the front straight. Lopez pulling over to the right hand side of the track, the defensive line going down into turn one. Aldeguer showed a wheel a couple of times, but Lopez was good on the brakes into the opening corner. There we saw Aldeguer getting the switch back. Before this happened, contact between the two at the bottom of the hill at turn nine, thankfully, no one went down and then a few laps later this happened the race winning overtake slight contact again this time lopez couldn't do anything but run wide bunny hops over the curbs avoiding chavi carlos and avoiding a crash comes back onto the track to finish third place but it was firm in aldegaia race two victor in portimao that's seven in a row now for the world championship leader what a season those two are having Here's confirmation of the results then from race two of the Moto2 European Championship here 
at the Algarve International Circuit. Aldeguer wins again from Carlos, who picks up his first podium with Lopez settling for third. Tulevic returned after his race one DNF to finish fourth. Rato finishes fifth for the second time. Great result for him. Sam Wilford picking up a consecutive P6 as well. That's his best, equal best from race one. Alex S. Scrigg winning the Super Sox 600 category race once again. That's his 100% record in the class intact. Another top 10 for the Yamaha rider. As we saw Kemith Kubo, Adam Norodin suffer crashes with Leon Orgis and Paz, the VL46 Mastercamp rider, crashing out. Final podium of the day then coming up. It's a familiar sight. Team Chiatti, Boscoscuro. Team member picking up a, a race winning trophy. Alonso Lopez on the podium for the seventh race in a row. It's not the P1 he would have been after. It's not even the P2 he would have wanted either. Unfortunately for Lopez, it's P3, but nevertheless a great wide. Card loose, finishes second, but this man, Fermin Aldeguer, is a race winner for the seventh time in a row. Credit to Alonso Lopez as well, the way he's handled this. I think a lot of riders would have been very, very unhappy with that. Um, not as so much at Aldeguer's riding, but more point of losing a victory in that kind of fashion. Um, but nothing but respect for his teammate and appreciation for the job he's done. He's a... Uh, He's a very, very nice young lad, is Alonso Lopez. And uh, yeah, a solid podium for him. It's not what he wanted, and it's not good news for his championship standings and his hopes later in the season, but you can only appreciate the job that this young rider is doing. Absolutely. I echoes though, echo those words, Lewis. Good to see great sportsmanship between the two teammates. Obviously, appreciating each other's work. Lopez would have done the same thing, wouldn't he, if he was in the same position. It's what motorcycle racing is all about, as we hear the Spanish national anthem. I'm sure we'll be hearing that national anthem a few more times for Fermin Aldegar in the coming years. He's a really special talent as a 16-year-old. Another victory to his name. To round off a fantastic day of action here at the Autodromo Internacional Algarve. <laughs> Aldegar has to settle for the fizzy water. He's not old enough yet, of course. Lopez and Carlos spraying the, the bubbly. A successful day of racing for the trio. A well-earned break now for three weeks before the paddock heads to Aragon. Here's a look at the championship standings then after two races here. Fermi now to get maximum points, 175. Job well done. Also job well done for Alonso Lopez. He loses ground on his teammate, but... He's comfortably clear of second place. Adam Norodin, Lukas Tudovic closes up and Kyle the Loose is tight in the battle for third place. Rato and Wilford also picking up season and career best results to consolidate their position in the top 10. Zeti, Kubo, Bierschakowski will be hopefully seeing him back in Aragon after missing our uh, Sunday here in the Algarve. There's the remaining points. Scorers, Aleix Few, Gutierrez, Mertens, Jeremy Burnett, and Mark Luna. So here are the top Superstock 600 runners then. Alex Eskrieg also maintains his unbeaten record. In 2021, he finished comfortably clear of Andre Vostatek, uh, who was uh, second in Superstock 600 earlier on today as well. And Kevin August uh, taking third overall in that class. And... Uh, yeah, Alexis Grigg, much like Aldegar last year, is well on course um, for Superstock 600 glory. And as you, we've already seen, Aldegar's kicked on since. 
Askarig will be hoping you can do the same in the future too. Yeah, spot on, Lewis. Another top 10 for Alex Askarig on the super, super stock 600 Yamaha. Here's the championship standings then in the stu super stock 600 class. Alex Askarig, maximum points just to Zaldegaer. 175 points, a whopping 68 clear of Andre Voschek with Kevin August on 95 points in third place. Leon August, 75 points, just ahead of Crotze with Moreno Perez. Perez running out the top eight. Antonio Carpe, Raschek, Schultz, Jesperson and Maria are the other runners who have scored points in the Superstock 600 class. In the Moto2 European Championship, it was all about these two riders today. Fermin Aldeguer versus Alonso Lopez in race two. What a spectacle it was. What a race winning move it was from that man, Fermin Aldeguer. The number 54 continues to dominate proceedings here in the Moto2 European Championship. What a race, what a day we've had. These guys will be back out on track in Aragon later this month. Lewis Sudeby will bring in the action from Jack up with Jack up over there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Fermin Aldeguer continues his streak. It's goodbye from me and goodbye from Lewis. Have a nice rest of your Sunday.